If you ask for feedback on your writing in a bad way, you're gonna get bad feedback. Hi, I'm Jed Hearn, and this is Daily Writing Advice. So in today's episode, I wanna give you four really useful questions that you can use anytime you're giving your story to someone for feedback. And first of all, before I give you the questions, it's really important to approach feedback with the opinion, with the mindset rather, of how can you help me improve this story? So when you go out to people and you want feedback from them, you have to make sure that your intention is genuinely trying to make your story better. If your intention is just wanting your friends to tell you that you've done a great job with your story and that it's amazing and that it's really great, that's fine, but that's not feedback. That is praise. So it's important to have that mindset going into it. Go into feedback with the mindset of, I want you to be as critical as possible because this isn't about my ego. This is about improving the story and making it the best that it can possibly be because it's much better to hear that in the early editing part of the process, as opposed to when the book comes out and you get crappy reviews. So, four questions that you can use to ask people who are giving feedback on your writing. And these are questions designed to focus your feedback readers, or maybe your beta readers, if you wanna use that terminology, on macro, big picture things. Because it's way more useful for them to focus on these big picture elements, story, you know, characters, plot, suspense, rather than more micro, smaller level details like spelling or grammar or sentence structure, because those things are gonna probably change anyway. But focusing on those bigger things lets you fix the more important issues before getting tied up with that small stuff. So question number one to ask readers is, what bores you? What parts of the novel didn't capture your interest? What characters were just meh, to read about. What bores you? Really useful question. Number two, what confuses you? So as a reader, were there parts where you were kind of lost? Did the big solution at the end of the novel's climax just not work for you? Was the villain's motivation weird and illogical? Really important to get that nailed down in the early part of the process. And again, not later when it's out in the world and all these plot holes get revealed to everyone. Number three, is what didn't you believe. So I've talked before about how, regardless of whether you're an outliner or you're a pantser, regardless of whatever your writing style is, you still wanna create this idea of truth in your stories because truth is fundamentally what stories are about. Even though they're lies, they're, as Neil Gaiman says to paraphrase one of his quotes, they're good lies that tell true things. Um, you know, their stories aim to capture some element of trueness about the human condition, about the way the world is, about our relationships, no matter if it's wrapped up in this kind of fantastical setting with magic and dragons and lasers and whatever. So what don't you believe? This could be applied to the world building if you're writing a fantasy novel. You know, what do readers not believe about how the magic system works? What do readers not believe about the population densities of your cities. Or it could be applied to a more character level thing. What do readers not believe about your character's motivations? Are your characters acting in a believable way for them? And then question number four, and this is probably the most fun question to ask people, and you can ask this question to hopefully recover some of that ego that might've been bruised by those other questions. And it is this, what did you like? And the reason why you ask this question is so that you don't accidentally remove things that readers like. So you ask this question, not just because it's good to actually hear some positive stuff after those three questions, which will probably highlight a lot of negative things, but you also wanna make sure that you understand which parts of your story are standing out to readers. Because if you don't know this, then you can quite easily accidentally demolish them in subsequent edits. So I'll go through those questions one more time. The first one is, what bores you? Second one is, what confuses you? Third one is, what don't you believe? And then the fourth one is, what do you like? And these questions are not mine. They come from Mary Robinette Cowell, who is a fantasy and sci-fi author, really good author. And I'll link to the full post that she has on this. These are the questions that she uses with her beta readers. So when she sends out early drafts of her novels to these readers, like I mentioned earlier in this episode, She's not concerned with the micro level details because 
a lot of the times when you get down to those details, readers will start trying to fix things for you. But really what you want the readers to do when they're giving feedback on your stories is just to tell you what's wrong. Even though it's comforting if they tell you how to fix it, ultimately that's your job as the author. Because in a lot of cases, when readers tell you that something's just not right, but they don't know how to fix it, that's going to be so much more productive for you as opposed to when readers say, this isn't what's right, sorry, this is what's wrong, and here's how to fix it, because they don't know your story as well as you do. And, you know, they might not be writers, so they might maybe give you bad advice if they're prescriptive. But if they just give you feelings, which is what these questions are designed to attack, that's going to be so much more useful when it comes to editing your stories. So, that's our episode. I've been Jed Hearn, and this has been Daily Writing Advice. Thank you so much for listening. Now go and write extraordinary stories.